Welcome to Dating Advice for Men Who Love Women. I am Jim Wolf, and this is our first ever live stream. So I'm really happy to be doing this. And if this one goes well, we'll probably try this for a few weeks and see how it goes. And if everyone's getting some value out of it, we want to keep doing it, then we'll continue with these live streams probably once a week uh, on Thursday evenings. And I won't always necessarily go over just the newsletter topics. And by the way, if you are not subscribed to our newsletter, that comes out every Thursday morning. And so if you're just on YouTube right now, you're a subscriber on YouTube, I highly encourage you to go to datingadviceformenwholovewomen.com and grab one of our free trainings. And when you put your email in there for that, you're going to get automatically signed up for our weekly newsletter as well. And I personally think that it has a lot of value. So definitely encourage you to do that if you haven't already. And then, of course, again, uh, we're going to try this out and see how it goes. And we might do it every week as well on Thursday evenings. So again, I might not necessarily just go over the newsletter topics. Today, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to go over some bonus content for a second, and then I'm going to answer questions. But sometimes I'll have a different topic. Sometimes I'll cover something from pop culture that's relevant. And then I'll try to always give an opportunity for you to ask questions in the chat at the end of each live stream. Um, and so we can have some interaction that way. All right, so let's go ahead and get into today's topic. And if you read today's newsletter already or you saw the headline, you already kind of know what it is. And if you've been with me for a while, you probably are kind of already aware of this, but it's such an important concept and it goes so deep that I just wanted to cover it here with you again and give you a few different angles than maybe you saw in the newsletter already. Hey, what's going on, Jason? Appreciate that, man. So the... Today's topic is going to be what I call pizza awareness or the pizza principle. And basically what that means is that a woman wants you because she wants you, not because you want her. So a woman wants a man because she wants him, not because he wants her. And again, that might sound really kind of simple and obvious, but it's not. And it's pervasive in our culture that it's kind of the other way around. So like I always hear these songs of like, I would die for you or whatever, you know, like I, I could no one else could possibly love you more than me. And a guy saying that to a woman. Right. Or. Uh, yeah, nobody could ever love you as much as I could. I would die for you. And then there's this thing in movies where it's kind of like, just tell her how you feel. And when I hear that, when I hear like, tell her how you feel, what I hear is tell her some potentially really irrelevant information <laughs> because she doesn't care if you have romantic feelings for her unless she already has them for you. And it's not the most effective way to go about that, as you probably already know if you've been with me for a while. And so those things kind of really grind my gears when I hear that in our culture. And that's why I wanted to cover this today. So while telling a woman how you feel isn't necessarily horrible, it's better than never taking any action with a woman that you want to date, right? It's a lot better to kind of just start a conversation with her and get on that dating track right away and ask her out, ask for her phone number, ask her out, take her on a date and try to go on the dating track first. And then if it doesn't work out, after that, you can be friends with her with none of that kind of like, well, I would rather date her stuff in the back. It's actually better if you want to be friends at that point. So it's a lot better to just attract her properly than to stay in the friend zone for however long and then just tell her how you feel, right? And again, unless she already likes you, it doesn't matter if you like her that way or not. So we want to switch our focus to female interest instead of pushing our interest onto women. And when you do that, you have a lot more success and you're a lot happier. And so one of the key points from today is your interest level in a woman does not raise her interest level or it doesn't spike her attraction if you're just going for hookups. And so let's say that you really like a woman and your interest level in her is like seven or eight out of 10. It doesn't make her like you more if all of a sudden your interest is a 9 out of 10. 
it does not raise female interest level. It's a separate process. Her interest level is separate from yours. Now, of course, your interest level is relevant to a woman if she does have high interest in you. It starts getting up there to seven, eight, nine. Now she's really liking you. Now she wants to kind of know, like, where am I at with you? And at that point, after she's kind of showing you those things and telling you those things, then you can kind of reciprocate. And you're already showing her your strong interest in her by taking all the steps that we talk about, by starting a conversation, by asking for her number. You're just not saying it verbally. You're doing it with your actions, which is more attractive. Okay. All right. So now I want to talk about those three paradigm shifts that I mentioned in the newsletter today that are related to this pizza principle or pizza awareness. Okay. So now that we know, you know, our interest level doesn't raise a female's interest. It doesn't matter to her how interested you are unless her interest is already high, right? So here are three paradigms that three paradigm shifts that you can make where you can apply this concept in your real life starting today. And so the first one is most men are just trying to get lucky. We have that in our culture too, right? And that's really kind of a low level of approaching this whole idea we call women. What we wanna do instead is lead the process of dating, test a woman to find out if she has any interest in you genuinely or not, and also her character to see if she's the right kind of woman for you if you want a relationship, and then win. Okay, that's why it's called game and playing and all that stuff, and I don't really like the concept of playing games too much, but at the end of the day, that's better than trying to get lucky. So uh, when a guy's trying to get lucky, he's kind of like, oh, I really like this one woman. I'm so attracted to her or whatever. And then he just tries to get her. And again, that's kind of like just base level uh, strategy. It's not really a strategy. It doesn't work out that often. On the other hand, if you're a smart guy, if you're attracted to a woman, the first thing you're going to do is test to see if she might have any genuine interest in you first. Then you don't waste your time or her time or your energy on her. And so that's why we have checkpoints and little tests that we use along the way so that it's better for you and for her, right? So we don't just push our interest onto a woman. We want to test her interest from the very beginning. And one thing I like to do, and I encourage you to do in every single first conversation that you ever have with a woman, is to use the name test. And if you have name tags on or whatever, you can't really do it. So you got to do some other stuff. But if you have no name tags, you're just meeting a woman somewhere, you should always do this. So basically what the name test is, is you just ask her what her name is. And then you do not give your name back unless she asks you back. And you wait for that. And the thing is, if she's interested in you, she will definitely ask you your name back by the end of that conversation. It doesn't have to be immediately, but sometime by the time you're finished talking to her, she'll ask your name back. Hey, by the way, what's your name? If she doesn't ask your name back in that conversation, you can safely assume she's not interested in you at all and move on. And no matter how high your interest in her is, it doesn't matter. The right thing to do is to move on from that. So it was okay to shoot your shot, go talk to her, whatever, but you drop that name test in. And now you realize she has no interest or she's just not available. Maybe she has a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a husband or a wife or whatever. And that's why she's not asking back. She's not trying to continue that interaction with you too much. And if she does ask you your name back, she might be interested in you or she might just be polite or both because a polite person is going to say, oh, what's your name? Most of the time. All right. So that can already eliminate someone who's not interested in you right away, if she doesn't ask your name back, just say, nice meeting you, Mary Beth, have an awesome day, and then move on to the next awesome woman that you're attracted to. Make sense? Cool. All right, so the second paradigm shift that I wanna cover is, again, from before, telling a woman how you feel about her verbally versus finding out if she has any interest in you, and if she does, then raising it and showing her how much you like her through your attractive actions. So if you have the good guy guide or you have attract and keep her, if you're following the steps inside those programs with a woman, you are already communicating to her that you're interested. 
and you're doing it in the most attractive way possible. So you're still telling her, you're just not verbally telling her with your mouth. And again, that's much more attractive and you have a much higher chance of success when you do it that way versus just like kind of trying to be friends with her, whatever. And then six months later saying like, oh, actually I like you romantically, (laughs) which makes things super awkward for everyone. And so you want to shift from trying to tell her how you feel about her as a way to get her to like you because it's not going to work. That's irrelevant to her unless she already has high interest to testing her interest level like we just talked about. And if there is any there, then raising it by following the systems that we have around here. And that's what raises her interest level. She's attracted to those male qualities that you demonstrate consistently over time. And if you're, you've been around here for a while, you know what those are challenge, high internal value, internal strength, and pre-selection. So assuming she has some interest in you when she meets you, those are the four things that raise a woman's female uh, romantic interest over time and allow her to fall deeply in love with you. And if you're telling her with your mouth too much, how much you like her, giving her that irrelevant information, that can start to erode that interest really fast. So be careful with that. And then lastly, number three, trying to show her how much you like her again versus just presenting yourself as the most delicious slice of pizza possible. And I talked about this in the newsletter today already, but I just, it's so funny. Like imagine a time when you really, really wanted some kind of food. And for me, it would probably be tacos, but it could be like a burger, something you were really craving. That food didn't want you back, right? you wanted that pizza because you wanted it or that taco or whatever it is, right? And it's the same thing for us with the woman. She wants you because she wants you, you know, and you don't want three tacos because they call you on the phone and say, oh, I'm in love with you. I, no one could ever love you as much as I do. I would die for you. Like, who cares about that? You want the freaking tacos. And for a woman, it's the same experience with a man. And it can be frustrating for her when you're telling her all that irrelevant stuff. She just wants you and you're probably ruining it now. So if she's interested in you, you're just ruining it. And if she's not, you're making it awkward. So it's kind of not the right way to approach it in general. Again, telling her how you feel one time, if you've been friends with her for a long time, is better than never, ever saying that. But there's a lot of other better ways. And if you're already friends with a woman right now, you can just throw out a verbal primer and see how she reacts to that to see if there might be a spark there. It's a much better way to do it. And it doesn't make it awkward for either of you. But in general, if you want to date a woman, test her to see if she's interested at all. Give her these checkpoints to go through. See if she passes through them. Don't get too excited about the connection until she shows up for your third date or until you're hooking up with her if you're going for hookups. Don't get too excited about it until you have those results with her because that's the very beginning of starting something with her. So when she shows up for the first date, that's awesome. She's probably interested. She shows up for date number two. She hasn't kind of declined any of your date invitations. She hasn't canceled on you. She shows up for two dates. You go for a kiss. She kisses you back. It was a great kiss. Now she's really probably interested in you. Then you wait a few days and you ask her again, out again on the next date. And she shows up on time, ready to go. She's happy to be with you. When she shows up for that third date, now you finally have something and you can let yourself get one more level of excited about it. But before that, change your focus from your interest in how much you like her to how much does she like me and how can I raise that? And when you do that, you have a lot more success and you're happier. And now I just want to talk about a couple more concepts and then give you some bonus content. Yeah, exactly. Enjoy playing the game. That's right. And you don't have to play games to play the game. Here's the thing, like we're humans, right? We're all playing the game. And so you don't have to be a player to play the game. You know, you just want to win. We're just winning. That's all. And so is she if you do it right. Does that make sense? Cool. So the first concept that I want to cover now is women choose first and then we choose. So again, most men just have one specific woman in their mind and that's who they want and that's why they're reading my books and all that kind of stuff, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with 
focusing your attention on one woman if you're following all the steps right. That's totally cool. But it's a lot more helpful if you think about it as if she's not interested in you, there's nothing you can do to attract her. So you don't want to waste all of that kind of emotional energy when you don't even know if you can uh, attract her or not. So you want to find out if she's interested at all and then raise her interest over time. And so if you focus on thinking about, okay, which women are interested or open to me? And then which of those do I like best? And then date them. That's a lot better paradigm to live in than I just want this one person and I don't care. Like I'm not really even focused on her interest in me at all. That's just who I want. That's it. I'm going to try everything that I can. Again, it's fine for you to date one woman at a time. There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people do it. It's cool. Just follow the steps that make you the delicious slice of pizza to her that make you attractive instead of pushing your interest onto her. And then you're going to do a lot better. Uh, and then another one that we have talked about before is women tend to fall in love slower than men. So if you're just going for hookups, this is also true. There's that study down in Florida where uh, an attractive woman basically went around and asked men if they would sleep with her right now. And they all said yes, basically, almost all. And men did that. And the women were a little more hesitant, obviously, in general, right? So even for hookups, they're going to probably need to go through some more steps than we might sometimes, right? And it's the same thing with falling in love. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes women fall in love at first sight, too. That does happen. This actually happens a lot to military guys. They go overseas somewhere. A local woman sees them and is like, wow, I want to go home with you already. They leave their family, leave their religion, whatever. But most of the time, that's not the case. Her interest level in you usually starts at like four to six or something like that, not nine already. And when you go out with the woman that you're attracted to and you have a great first date, you're like, wow, I really like her. Then you go on a second date and it goes really well. You're like, oh man, this is awesome. You know, we're putting in the work to kind of lead that process forward. We're doing a, putting a lot of energy in there. And so we start to get kind of excited faster in general. And we fall in love faster. We're like, you can see a woman walking down the street and say, I want to marry her. For a woman in general, it typically takes two to three months for her to fall completely deeply in love with you. And that's assuming that her interest in you is already high when she meets you and you do everything right according to the attract and keeper system. So it's harder for her to fall in love. And it makes sense, right? If you just look at kind of like, she has one egg per month. We got lots of sperm all the time. Uh, the value in terms of that marketplace is a little higher for a woman. So she needs to protect that, make sure she's doing it right, etc. So there's a lot of background reasons for that, of course. But in general, just remember, it takes a woman longer to fall in love than you most of the time. And so one of the keys to success with a woman, if you want a relationship, is just to outweigh her. And that's one of the reasons why we give her a few days in between dates. We go spend an awesome time with her. She really likes that. She feels good. She wants more of it. Then we back up and we let time work for us and let her think about you in her mind and build you up in her mind. Then you come back in for another date after a few days and you have a great time. And then she's like, wow. And that process over time allows her to fall deeply in love. But again, it usually takes a lot longer than it does for us. So always keep that in mind. And then lastly, you already probably know this, but because I talk about it a lot, but female interest is the number one factor in your relationship with a woman at all times. And this is kind of the key that most relationship experts miss because they don't understand necessarily they don't focus on this attraction and romantic love part of a connection with a man and a woman too much. They just focus on how to interact with each other inside the relationship, which is very important as well. But if her interest level is six out of 10 or it's nine out of 10, she's going to treat you differently. And a lot of people miss that. So she can be in love with a guy and then another woman can be more in love with her husband or her boyfriend. And the woman who's more in love is going to be happier, more joyful, more feminine, treat the guy better. And so 
What we want is for her interest level in us to be as high as possible because she treats you better. She's happier herself. She's more fun to be around. And at that point, you can really see who she is as a person. Because once she's deeply in love with you, any of her character aspects that aren't on par are just who she is as a person. It's not because of her interest level in you anymore. And so we want her interest level to be 9 out of 10 or higher. It's imperative. And that is your only adultery insurance. So if you're with a woman for a long time, if you keep her interest level high, she can't cheat on you unless she has issues from the past that make her able to be disloyal, even with high interest, which is very rare. So we want to raise her interest level all the way to nine and keep it there. Is that difficult? Absolutely. It's rare. That's one of the main reasons why we have relationship problems in the West and everywhere around the world, really. It's because most women aren't deeply in love with their husbands or boyfriends. They're not. They might be six out of 10. They might be three. And then what's interesting is a lot of times a woman's interest level drops all the way to zero already in a relationship. She has no intention of, she will never be able to raise her interest in him again, but she stays there with him. Because like, oh, she's been with him a long time, or uh, it's just harder for her to leave if she's been with the guy for a while. And she wants to, not wants to, but what she does is she builds up resentment towards him. So she like kind of actively dislikes him. Now her interest is like negative one. And that's when she leaves. And to the man who's not thinking about her interest level, he's thinking about his, how he feels. He doesn't have this pizza awareness. He feels like that thing happened overnight. <laughs> but for two years, her interest level has already been zero and she's just been building up resentment. Now she really strongly dislikes him or hates him or whatever, disrespects him. And now she finally leaves and there's no chance she could ever come back. And that's how women tend to do it a lot of times. Whereas we just like, oh, we're not feeling it. We break up. We're not as good at breaking up either, to be honest, most of the time. These are generalities, but they mostly apply, I think. And so your, the number one factor in your relationship with a woman at any time is her level of interest in you, her genuine interest. So from the very beginning, we should start testing it, then we should raise it, and then if we can get her to that 9 out of 10 or higher, we should maintain it as long as we want to be with her because that's the best thing for you and for her. Women want to fall in love with an awesome guy, and they get pissed when you ruin it, and they should. We shouldn't ruin it. We should let them fall deeply in love and have a good relationship with them. And then once her interest level is 9 out of 10, of course, all that other relationship stuff comes in. It's not easy. You still have to do all that maintenance program stuff to keep her interest level high and all the other relationship stuff that can make your relationship better. So that's that whole package of pizza awareness from the very beginning all the way through to being with a woman for 50 years. Cool? All right, so this last little bonus content I want to go over is, and I actually don't know how to share my screen here. Let's see. Oh, share screen. Okay. I'm going to share my screen for a second. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see this. But I saw a tweet the other day, and I just wanted to go over this for just a second because I think it's really interesting. So this is a tweet from account Rudy Giuliani V2. Uh, he says, this is worse than a gunshot to the head. And I saw a lot of comments on this. And so basically he's showing a, a screenshot of a text message he got from a woman after going on a date with her. And he says, uh, she said to him in a text message, hi, I'm sorry, but I don't think I can hang out with you again. You were my first date after getting out of a relationship. And I realized after that, I'm not as ready as I thought I was. But I did have a lot of fun, and I hope you get the job that the traffic coming home after whatever wasn't too bad, smiley face. Now, here's the interesting thing about this tweet and this text message that he got. I love this text message from her. And what she's saying is, I have no interest in you romantically. And she's using a softener to soften the blow because she cares about guy's feelings. She doesn't want to hurt you. She's not going to try to say it directly. It's not very feminine in general to be super direct. It seems harsh to a lot of women. 
and she cares about people. She has those emotions. She wants to take care of you a little bit too. So she doesn't want to say explicitly, but she's saying it very clearly here when she says, I'm sorry, but I don't think I can hang out with you again. That's already the full message. And then she says, you were my first date after getting out of a relationship. And I realized after that, I'm not as ready, ready as I thought I was. Well, if she met Brad Pitt, she'd probably be ready. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So that's, I'm not saying she's giving an excuse. That might be partially true. But if her interest was already high in you, all of a sudden that would go away and she would rationalize that she is ready. And it's not something that's bad. This is just how it works with women. So when a woman sends you a message like this, it's great. She's actively saying she doesn't want to hang out again. In my opinion, this is a good thing because now you're not going to waste more energy on her and you can move on to the next woman. And most women are not even this direct or this honest. So I really appreciate this woman. I think her name is Steph. It says, what a great message to send. It's a caring message. It's an awesome way to say like, I had fun on this one date with you, but I don't want to date you again. If every woman was this honest, we'd have a lot easier time. So I just wanted to share this with you because this person sees it as a really negative, horrible thing. And I see it as extremely positive. I hope that we get messages like this. And on the other side, I hope we get messages saying, you know, like, hey, I had a great time with you. When are we going to meet up again? You know, that's the message that we want to get ultimately. But this message for me is awesome. And so I wanted to bring that up because it got a lot of negative feedback. Uh, and this guy thought it was horrible. And if I could talk to him, I would just say, you know, of course it hurts in the moment if you were interested in someone and she sends you this message, but it's way nicer and better of her to send this message than to keep kind of leading you on or just kind of ghost you and not reply to your text, whatever. She's being straight up and I really appreciate it. So appreciate you, Steph. Okay, so I'm not sure if you could see that or not, but I will put it in the video when I post it. So. Anyway, that was the uh, entire presentation I wanted to give today. And now I want to open up to you guys for questions. So if you have any questions for me, you can go ahead and type it in the chat and I will get to as many as I possibly can before I get out of here. So does anyone have a question? Just pop it in the chat. All right. Uh, what should we do if a woman ignores you? Okay, great question. So. If she's ignoring you, that's the strongest sign of not being interested. Because if she's interested, she's going to help you. And so sometimes they'll play hard to get a little bit. Uh, but let's say you're talking to a woman at a bar or something like that. If she's kind of ripping on you, kind of saying negative things towards you, she's not ignoring you. So even though it seems negative, that's still kind of an indicator of interest. Whereas if she's ignoring you, that's an indicator that she's trying to kind of go away from you. She's not interested. So I take it as a sign of disinterest and move on. But what you should do is, let's say you text her. She doesn't text you back. She's ignoring you. You don't text her again. Just wait a few days. And then you can try to text her one more time or ask her out one more time one week later. So if she's ignoring you, either move on or just give it some time and space. And then you can try one more step forward and see how it goes. Good question. Uh, okay, uh, what's the number one sign a woman's in love with you? <laughs> well, that's a great question because we can read all kinds of signs, but the signs can be very inaccurate. So if she's twirling her hair or whatever, that might be a sign of interest, or she might just do that in general. So the only way to know for sure is to put her through those checkpoints that we talk about and test her interest level over time. So you start a conversation with her. Does she seem engaged with it? Is she kind of playing back with you? Is she having fun? Or is she kind of turning her body away and kind of trying to ignore you, trying to get away? Uh, does she give you her number when you ask for it? Does she say yes to your date invitation and show up? And then does she kiss you back when you go for a kiss by the end of the second date. That's how you test her interest level. And then when she's in love with you, let's say you have been dating her for two and a half months, you've been on seven dates or something like that. When her interest level is high enough, she's gonna say something like, hey, where's this relationship headed anyway? Or what are we? She's gonna bring up the idea of being in a relationship. And at that point, that's when you know her interest level is high enough to be what we call being in love with you. That's the first 
checkpoint that reaches that level. And then later, I mean, like if she has really nine out of 10 interest in you, she's going to look up at you with kind of googly eyes. She'll look at you a little differently. Uh, it's very interesting. So hopefully you get to experience that soon if you haven't already. All right. So Nestor says, let's see. Uh, so what's your thought if a woman does not reply back after a couple of messages, leaving you hanging, but she's expressing her interest to you personally? That depends on how she's expressing her interest to you. So listen, when it comes to texting, the way she's interacting with you doesn't matter that much. What matters is, does she say yes when you ask her out for a specific day and time? And then she shows up, boom, she's interested. It doesn't matter what else happened in that texting conversation. It doesn't matter how many emojis she sends. <laughs> uh, and when you kiss her, does she kiss you back? You know, those things are a lot more important than messaging. And so don't get too hung up on using technology. What we want to read is those specific interest level checkpoints that tell you her real interest level. So stick to that. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is a good one. How do you interact with the woman you were dating? Uh, when she stops responding to you, but you see her at events because she's in your circle of friends? Great question. So here's the thing. Because you were dating her, you were interested in her, right? And there was a reason for that. She's probably a cool person at some level. And so what I would do is at the very least, just be polite. You don't have to continue to be super good friends with her, even if she's in your friends group. You can be friends with everyone and be polite with her and not kind of exclude her, but just kind of be cordial. But really, if she's in your friends group, your friends like her, you liked her, there's a reason for that. And for me, I would try to put aside your feelings and just be friends with her and be accepting of that. That's just me personally. And it's happened to me before. You know, you try something out and I, I would be proud of yourself for asking her out and it didn't work out. It's fine but you can focus on those things that you liked about her and continue to be, continue to be friends with her if you, if you want to. But the main thing is not to make it awkward for everyone. This is why I don't necessarily recommend dating women that you work with, because if it doesn't work out, all of a sudden it gets real awkward for everyone else in the office. So don't make it awkward for your friend group. Lead that situation, kind of lead her through that too. Even if she's not interested in you romantically anymore and it didn't work out with her, but she's in your friend group, lead how cool with that both of you should be and continue to be friends lead that process too maybe it's hard because you had strong feelings for her but that's kind of our role is to keep leading so see if you can kind of process that and focus on those good aspects of her and then just lead her into being cool about it like not making it awkward for everyone else ah yeah okay um so this guy has a girlfriend of 15 years and her interest level is still high and wants to be with him all the time. And, and I'm the one who needs space. Okay, so it's hard to talk about this now because you've already been together for so long. But in the initial phases of dating, the first you know, two to three months, and then after that, the first two years before you get married or just continue a longer relationship with a woman, you can tell a lot about her already. So this is, it's really interesting because the attract and keeper system doesn't just raise female interest level. That's not the only goal that we have. We also want to protect ourselves from the wrong women for us. And so let's say that the woman is, has a bad attitude or something like that towards life, whether you're with her or not, okay? She might not like it if you wait a few days before you ask her out on the next date. And she might not make it through the filter that's protecting you. That's part of it too. And later, you're going to be thankful that you weren't with her. And it's the same thing if a woman's like super needy and clingy, you're going to notice that right away, the way that she's texting you, the way that she's interacting with you, how clingy is she being? So we should look out for those things too. It's not just, oh, I like her, she likes me, that's it, we're together. There's specific things that we should look for, and those are all in my systems too. And you got to look for those along the way. And it might be painful, but sometimes you got to weed a woman out because you don't wanna be with her for 15 years and then you need this. But at this point, since you've been together for so long, hopefully you can have actual conversations with her and just explain it to her in as nice of a way as possible while still being direct and just saying, 
hey, at these specific times, I would like you to give me some space or I would like you to let me have my own time during this, this, and this. I would like this. You know, have a specific thing that you want in mind and share that with her and see how she responds. So hopefully you're able to do that with her after being with her for so long. What is your thought if she gives you a gift on your birthday? Oh, well, again, that's one thing that could be that she's interested in you romantically, or she could just think you're an awesome person because colleagues and friends give each other gifts on their birthday too. So again, what's more important is does she kiss you back when you go for it? Then she gave you a gift. Now, if she kissed you already, she kissed you again consistently every time you go out with her, and then she gives you a birthday gift, that's a very high positive sign of high interest. But you shouldn't just take that in a vacuum by itself and think that she likes you that way. Now, let's see. Okay, this one says, uh, the woman that he was dating didn't ask uh for him to be her boyfriend she said she thought it was masculine which is why she didn't ask well she still talked about it with you right that's good uh, but she shut down her instagram and stopped talking to any other men that is awesome because not only does that show that she's highly interested in you it also shows that she has the number one quality that we're looking for besides interest level and her being available which is loyalty you are trading your commitment to one woman for her loyalty that's the trade we're making. She's saying, I'm not talking to any other men. I shut my Instagram down. That's amazing. That's a keeper right there. As long as she also has a good attitude towards life in general, and she's a giving person versus a taker. If she has those qualities, congratulations, you have a highly interested keeper. And that's what we're going for. So yes, that's an amazing sign, not only about her interest level, but also her character. So I'm really happy for you. Definitely do your best to uh, keep that one around because that's great. And by the way, Here's an advanced pro tip. Let's say you've been dating a woman for two months, three months, whatever, and she says, hey, like, where's this relationship headed anyway? You can ask her, well, uh, are you still talking to any of your exes right now? And then if she says no, then you can ask her to be your girlfriend and you don't have to do it immediately. You can do it the next day or the next week or whatever, but then you're safe to do it. And if she says, well, yeah, you know, I'm kind of friends with these two ex guys. Then you just say, well, I kind of like the way things are right now as they are. And you don't say, like, you have to stop talking to your exes before I'll commit to you, but you imply it by saying that. And then hopefully later she'll say, like, oh, by the way, I'm not talking to Ryan anymore. Then you can ask her to be your girlfriend because you're making that trade and you're negotiating now before you commit. You're more likely to get that outcome. And we want a woman who's loyal. So you can negotiate for that before you commit. And I highly recommend that. But in your case, she's the one who told you, and that's amazing. I really love that. Okay, what should you text her after a week when she ignores you? Okay, so again, it's not a good sign if she hasn't texted you after a week in general, but you might as well throw one more thing out there if you want to after five to seven days. So you can, you can text her anything you want at that point. And what I would do is try to make it contextual. So if there's some kind of, like, if you've been on a date with her already, try to throw out something that's related, like a meme that's related to something you talked about on the date. Or, uh, you know, try to just kind of reset with something a little breaking uh, what she might expect to get from you. Definitely don't say anything sappy or like telling her you like her or whatever, as we just talked about in this presentation. But you can pretty much text her anything. Just don't text her like, hello, or... Uh, you know, how much you like her. You can just say like, and also you want to be careful about calling out that she hasn't texted you for a long time. You don't want her to really become consciously aware that you're actively thinking about that in your text message to her. So be careful with that too. But besides that, you can basically text her anything you want and try to make it related to something that you already know she relates to. Um, you can text her anything you want that's contextual from your day or something that she'll relate to. And just try to re-engage her and then just see if she replies. But I wouldn't hold out too much hope if she hasn't texted you for a week. But you never know. Sometimes, you know, like she went camping for a week or whatever, and then she just got back. She's like, oh, hey, what's up? Not very often, but it can happen. So you can try one more time. 
Yes, James, exactly. Don't ask if they have a boyfriend. Attract a woman by being fun, funny, confident, and aloof. Yeah, interested and indifferent at the same time. Interested but not pushing for a specific outcome, letting the outcomes come to you. Interested but not pushing your interest level on her, taking her interest level into consideration and testing for that and then raising it. Exactly. All right, let's see. One or two more here. Uh, okay, uh, hypergamy. How real is it? <laughs> it's definitely real because here's the thing, right? Like even the sweetest, most traditional kind of conservative or whatever kind of women, if you are the same guy and you work at McDonald's or you're a bank manager, she's probably going to like the bank manager a little more, right? Because if she gets pregnant, you got to help her take care of the kids. At least you got to have some resources. I'm not even just saying money. I'm just saying like she might be laid up for a few months, not being able to provide for herself and the child. You got to step up and she wants a guy who can do that. It makes perfect sense. There's just a big range of how it affects different specific women. Some women are just outright gold diggers. They trade their stuff for money directly or at some level, almost directly. You know, maybe she's not a professional. She's just likes a billionaire, you know, because he's a billionaire. So there's all kinds of levels. But here's the thing. If a woman likes you just because of your wealth and she's not actually interested in you romantically as a man, then that hypergamy applies because she meets a richer guy. She's out with him now if he likes her. So she's going to leave you for the better guy, right? So it's not safe. What you want is to find a woman who likes you, who's interested in you, and thinks of your kind of financial stability as a giant bonus that makes her feel more comfortable in the relationship. And you don't have to be a millionaire. It should just be like, if you want to have a family, you can take care of everything. That's, that's what it's all about at the end of the day, right? So it makes sense that even the sweetest woman would care about that a little bit because she might not be able to do it for a while. So yes, it applies. But then another aspect of that that kind of some other dating people talk about is spinning plates where their idea is to use pre-selection all the time, even in a relationship where it's like, I still have other options, I still have other options and making her kind of fear that and that's why she's still attracted to you. Well, yeah, that does work, but... Here's the thing about that that these other people don't really fully understand. When a woman's interest level in you is actually genuinely 9 out of 10 or higher, you don't need to do that anymore. And actually having those other options, if she's consciously aware of that, that's going to hurt her really bad. So all we have to do is get her interest level all the way up to 9 to begin with, which is why you should stick to the system and not deviate from it. Even if you have high interest, it doesn't matter. That's when you should do it even more. Wait those five to nine days after your date to ask her out again. Do not skimp on this just because you think a woman is awesome. That's when you should do it even more because we need her interest level to get to nine out of 10. And then later, you don't have to do that spinning plate thing of like, oh, I have all these other options. If it doesn't work out with you, I'm going to be fine. Now, in the very back of her mind, she should know that if she leaves you, you're not going to be completely destroyed. You're going to be okay that keeps women on their toes. That should always be there. But you don't have to be so kind of direct about these kind of concepts and spinning plates, assuming you get her interest level to nine out of 10 and keep it there. And assuming that she, you chose a woman who has the characteristics that we require. So that's how I feel about that concept. And then let's see, one last one here. Okay, what if a woman claims that she has deep interest in you, but shows you she would not compromise or change any of her behaviors or plans for you? Okay, great question. So we got to separate out some different parts of being with a woman. One is her interest level, and one is her attitude. And we need a woman who's not only a giver, who's not only loyal, but who has a flexible attitude. If a woman is not flexible, if you're with her for 25 years, you're going to start resenting her. You're going to hate that over time. It's a must to be with a woman in a long-term relationship. And she doesn't have to give in to you every single time to be flexible. She just has to sometimes do it your way. Sometimes you compromise and do it her way. 
And what she's showing you here is that she's not flexible. So she might have high interest in you. It's possible for a woman to have super high interest in you and not be flexible and not be a loyal person in general and not have a good attitude towards life in general and not be a giver. She can be a nine out of 10 interested in you and just be a taker who never thinks about anyone else. It's possible. So those are not connected. She can be fully deeply in love with you and still not be flexible. And that's what she's showing you here. And for me, if a woman told me something like that, I would el immediately eliminate her as a long-term partner option because I know it's extremely important for a woman to be flexible. And we should too, by the way. Now, here's the thing. A relationship can never actually be 50-50 because if you have 101 decisions, one person's going to get that one more. But we should work to be as close to 50-50 as possible. And by the way, this might be controversial, but it's a little better if you are the 51 and she's the 49. That works better for both of you feeling in love with each other. It shouldn't be like 80-20 one way or the other. We have to be a little flexible too. Of course, we should work with her. But you need a woman who does that with you. And that's really important for us on our end. It's important for her too, but it's way more important for us. So make sure that you find a woman who has a flexible attitude and then you won't resent her over time and you can be happy with her as long as you want to be together. So, all right, that is it for today. Uh, I'm so glad that you could make it to our first ever live stream and I hope it was helpful to you. Uh, I will probably do this a couple more times at least to just see how it goes. So if you have some questions, uh, definitely uh, bring them for next time as well. So hopefully I will see you next week and I hope you have a great weekend.